Oi, welcome to Command and Conquer Red Alert 3. I'm an Allied Guardian tank, and these prats and I are here to tell you about how we think you should be doing your job, sir. Yes, we've temporarily called a truce to make sure you do not send us to our deaths needlessly. To begin with, we will tell you how to move your viewpoint around the battlefield and how to command your units, including the best ones, such as me, the Soviet Hammer Tank. Just look at this body compared with the teeny little Japanese tank to my left. Shut up! Ow! Please excuse him, sir. Let us begin. Oh, blimey. Hey! There's a new faction in town, and this is my tutorial, damn it! Scram, you freeloaders! Get out of here! Hey, what is going on, Commanders and Grunts? It's a long came spider, and welcome to Just the Basics. In this episode, I hope to cover the fundamentals of a mod known as Mental Omega for Euro's Revenge, Riddler 2. For veterans, I will be making videos for advanced techniques later down the road, but for this episode, I will be talking about types of units, unit counters, and the triangle of death. Disclaimer, this video is going to be very information heavy. You've been warned. So, what do I mean when I say I'm going to cover units? Units are, you know, just stuff on the field, right? Well, there are five characteristics to note about each unit deployed on the field. Costs, armor type, health, weapon type, and secondary abilities. Learning about these characteristics allow you, Commander, to come up with a better battle plan. Costs is the credit required to build a unit. Pretty self-explanatory there. Armor type is the protection unit has, ranging from light to heavy. Infantry have their own armor classes of basic, black, lake, and cyborg. Weapon type is the kind of weapon fielded by a unit. And since Mental Omega has a different damage value than vanilla Red Alert 2, weapon type is extremely important. In more than one cases, units can have more than one weapon. For example, the epically awesome Centurion Walker has a main cannon that absolutely disintegrates buildings. But it also comes with an anti-air missile pod that does quite a lot of damage to air targets too. Secondary abilities are often deploy abilities, such as the Guardian GI deploy mode giving them better fire rate and range there are also some universal unit types applicable to every sub faction, but to talk about those unit types, we have to look at a more specific unit. The Borello is the amphibious transport for the Soviet faction, costing 1,000 credit with a health of 720 and equipped with heavy armor. It is armed with a single flamethrower, effective against all kinds of infantry and extremely effective against all structures. The Borello's secondary ability is being a detector, capable of spawning mines, phone grids, and sneaky invisible units like the Shadow Tank, but it is only usable by the Russian and Confederation sub factions because China has a better version of the Borello called the Armadillo. It has more health, more troop carrying capacity, and double the flamethrowers at the cost of one speed. Many sub factions have their own upgraded version of a standard faction unit, with an increased price, of course. As you can see, the Borello is a pretty awesome unit. Its high health and armor makes it the perfect assault unit. The Borello also shares some universal roles like being a transport and being a detector and every faction has a transport capable of traversing water, such as the Stallion for the Allies, the Driller for the Epsilon, the Jackal for the Foeman, and of course, the Borello for the Soviets. To load infantry, simply select your infantry and click on the transport. To evacuate the infantry inside the transport, simply press D to deploy or hover over the loaded transport and left click. If there's ever and oil derricks offshore make one of these. Of course, all other factions have their own detectors, two detectors to be exact. Some factions even have three. 
we have the Robotank and Seal for the Allies, the Borello and Tesla Trooper plus the Sensen Tower for the Soviets, the Doom Rider, Stinger and Shadow Tank for the Epsilon, and finally, Foen gets the Clairvoyance, which doubles as a spy unit and spy detector, and the Sodar Array that must be deployed in order to detect stealth. Now that you know the characteristics of units, let's talk about some ways to know how to counter them. Identifying damage types and their effects against different categories of units is a fairly easy process. Common sense can guide you a fair number of the way. Anti-tank weapons such as cannons and missiles aren't going to do too much to a pack of attack dogs, but versus a lone, scared looking scut launcher, well, I see you can fill in the details. There are some units that can completely deny another type of unit. Besides the Universal Detector and Transport, all factions have a variety of anti-mob units, anti-air unit, and artillery unit. First, we have the Soviet Desolator as the prime example of an anti-mob unit. Just look at the brutal efficiency it takes out infantry. And with its secondary deployability, it's almost like replaying the events of a nuclear reactor meltdown. Keep in mind, these anti-mob units aren't heroes and aren't invincible. They will fall if overwhelmed. Then, we have Tier 3 Anti-Air Units. These puppies can true up in Carla with no problem. The Oxidizer might need a little help from his allies because it is only a heavy debuff unit and doesn't actually do any damage. But nevertheless, if you encounter heavy air resistance on the fume, these units are the way to go. Lastly, we have the artillery vehicles that specialize in blowing up structures to smithereens. Most artillery vehicles can be used as an effective anti-infantry vehicle, but some are too specialized to care about infantry, like the Magnetron that holds vehicles in place, the Scud Launcher with an insane missile range, the Tetra Cannon that requires a lock onto fire, and the Plague Splatter because, well, it's regarded as the worst artillery vehicle of all times. But fear not, little Splatter, there's always room for you in the Crushing Crane. What you don't know will hurt you. Not knowing which units are detectored, which are anti-air, or which require higher tech levels to be built. No one likes being surprised in the middle of the game when something they didn't even knew existed come up to their base and just blow up everything. So be sure to visit the Mental Omega website under the sub-factions tab to read up on all the units available. Knowing tech trees are important too, but some of the best content is the background information on the units because they actually are quite interesting. 
the Borello description especially if you read the last paragraph. Now that we know what units do, let's go over what a Triangle of Death is. Now, the Triangle of Death is not actually the Bunmuna Triangle or the Illuminati. It's a core army composition made out of three units that can basically cover all spectrum of damage types. A relatively effective Triangle of Death would be Abrams, Guardian GIs, and Riot Troopers. With this composition, you've got the ground-based damage against both infantry mobs and vehicles. Plus, Garni GIs can cover the air too. With a decent economy, this is a very, very easy army composition to pump out. And since most of the army is infantry, it's also easily replaced. I'm not saying Triangles of Death are the end-all and be-all of army compositions. However, it is a relatively safe and effective way to start out playing. Eventually, variety does win games, so don't be afraid to mix up your army compositions beyond the first three core units. However, if you're just starting out and you're trying to get a feel of what the game actually play like, I recommend you find three units that covers both ground, air, and infantry mobs, and you just start pumping those things out. Well, that is it for today's basics, and I want to introduce a little segment at the end of each video. It's just the purest form of me talking, just me. No script, no plan ahead, and I've actually re-recorded this section a couple of times because I didn't like how it turned out, so maybe I was lying a little bit on the no planning thing. But I wanted to say how fun it was making this video. I like making the skits. I like making little dry jokes. I don't know if you laugh, but I did like making it. And I think this is as fun, if not more fun, than all the casts I ever do where I basically screen my head off. And I also like the music I'm putting into this. Um, tell me, tell me if you hate the music, because that is okay. There, there's people out there with tastes completely different from mine. But it is part of my learning process to know what you know and for me to teach you what I know. And that's basically what a tutorial is, isn't it? In the next episode, I'll finally be covering the tech trees for all the factions. And then, I will be even walking you step by step through one of Tesla Cruiser's signature build orders. Until then, this has been Along came a spider, and have a great day!